Yeah. Listen, I'd like to thank you all very much for inviting me to speak here on behalf of the Ireland Palestine Solidarity Campaign. I'd also like to thank this or to take this opportunity to thank Ireland for its ongoing support for the people of Palestine in their struggle against the occupying force of Israel and the continuous oppression that this occupation brings to their daily lives. I would also particularly like to thank two members of IRD, Jerry Casey, for his work as part of the IPSC's media team. His skill and ability have been invaluable over the last six months. And I have to thank Baz Curran, the bannerman, as we call him, for living up to his name and producing high quality banners uh, for many of our events over the years, and also for putting up with my inability to paint in a straight line. <laughs> He's a man of endless patience. Um, now, I suppose the issues of 62, 63 years now of occupation uh, colonisation and repre repression are endless. The ongoing abuses of human rights are well charted and the impunity with which Israel continues to breach international law are obvious to us all. I want instead to, rather than conduct a political analysis in a short space of time, to talk to you about what we here in Ireland as good people of conscience can do and to outline some of the work that can be carried out by yourselves, by the IPC and others. We, as you know, probably are a broad-based, non-party political, membership-funded organisation that have been campaigning for justice for all of the people of Palestine since 2001. The Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions campaign is central to our work, and we believe that it should be central to all Palestinian solidarity work. As with South Africa um, and apartheid there, the BDS campaign is an effective way for individuals and civil society internationally to isolate the rogue state of Israel, and the best way that we can support our brothers and sisters both Israeli and Palestinian, who are fighting Israeli colonization of Palestine. Um, there is, of course, the argument that runs along the lines of, you know, we can't isolate one side in the conflict, we need to respect both sides and encourage dialogue. This argument, however, assumes two things. One, that there are two equal sides in this conflict, when in fact there is a colonizer with one of the biggest military forces in the world, and a colonized and oppressed Palestinian people. Secondly, it assumes that Israel negotiates in good, hate, good, good faith when history has in fact shown the opposite. For example, during the so-called Oslo peace process years, illegal settlements doubled in clear violations of the terms of Oslo. Of course, Israel can act this way because it enters negotiations from a position of power, while Palestinians enter negotiations from a position of relative weakness. If we accept the talks are a genuine way to provide uh, you know, a road to justice, uh, and to some sort of just and lasting peace, then there must be some, degree, some sort of degree of parity between the negotiating parties. The IPSC believe that BDS, Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions, offers us, the, uh, as international civil society, a means to help to achieve this parity. BDS enables us to pressure the Israeli state to show that its actions have repercussions internationally, and that it is no longer <coughs> acceptable for, to act, for it to act in the way that it does. On this basis, we believe that BDS can only have a positive role in laying the groundwork for future negotiations on a more or less level playing field. Um, when we look at recent attempts at peace negotiations, they seem somewhat farcical, realistically. We've seen a freeze on settlement building tabled as a bargaining tool. Now, we must remember that these settlements are Israeli colonies in the occupied West Bank. They're illegal under international law, and thus should not be tolerated by the international community in any way, shape, or form. Of course, as well, the exclusion of Hamas, the democratically elected government of the people of Palestine, whatever we may think of them, means that these negotiations can never be fully representative of all of the people of Palestine. Hamas, amongst other political parties, have been excluded on the grounds that they are a terrorist organization. However, worldwide abuse of the term terrorist has resulted in worldwide acceptance of the abuse of humanitarian law. By pointing the finger of terrorism at others, Western democracies and other states, including with Israel, remove the protection of human rights to the Geneva Conventions and humanitarian law. Humanitarian law was established to protect freedom fighters and their supportive civil civilians from state war crimes such as what we witnessed during Operation Cast Lead. States do not punish themselves or their military, thus international law must endeavour to do so. The Israeli state with its policies of ethnic cleansing, apartheid and collective punishment is the real terrorist in this equation. And only when Israel is no longer afforded impunity by the EU and the international community can it begin to see itself as <coughs> of the neighbourhood and approach these talks afresh. Now, in the last year, the IPSC has been involved in various campaigns along the lines of boycott, divestment and sanctions, political lobbying campaigns, the cultural, uh, Irish artist's cultural pledge to boycott the state of Israel until such a time as it complies with international law, um, and also the very, very successful campaign that saw the Irish army cease buying bullets from the from Israeli military companies. 
this was a huge success for BDS internationally. Um, however, we have to look at the other side of this. We're only three weeks into 2011, and already numerous Palestinians have been killed by the Israeli military. Meanwhile, the siege of Gaza and, the, and Israeli airstrikes continue, as do settler attacks on Palestinians. And state repression of Palestinian citizens of Israel, Jewish Israeli and international anti-occupation activists continue. Despite this sort of calm that one might perceive from Western media sources, the occupation remains as harsh, as harsh as ever for the Palestinian people. And therefore, solidarity actions also remain as necessary as ever. We believe that it is important to have a strong and consistent voice for building both solidarity with Palestine and the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement here in Ireland, while reaching out to Palestinians and Israelis who take a, a progressive approach to achieving a just and lasting peace in the region. We hope that we can provide that voice on the island of Ireland, and we encourage you all to get involved with our movement and get involved with Palestinian solidarity in Ireland, and become part of what mainstream Israeli politicians are now calling, and I quote, a strategic threat designed as colonialism in Palestine. Um, I'm quite proud to be part of that strategic threat, to be honest. Logic determines that one cannot build a house from the top down. To effect change, we must start from the bottom, we must start from ourselves and realise our ability not to force change, but to apply pressure as members of Irish civil society to ensure that after so much failure, a just and lasting peace for Israel and Palestine is facilitated by the entire international community. I think we can all accept that peace without justice is not peace at all. Thank you very much.